Uh, thanks everyone. Uh, today I'm, I'm going to talk about the differential private knowledge transfer for privacy preserving cross domain recommendation. Yeah, this is our recent work. And this is a joint work with Chao Chao Chen and Jia Jie Su. Jia Jie is here. Uh, she did a great job for this work. And Lin Juan Lu, Xiao Ling Zheng, and uh, Li Wang. Uh, I'm Hui Wen Wu from the Ant Group. Okay, let's begin. Uh, today, my talk consists of six parts the introduction, uh, motivation, framework, analysis, experiments, and the conclusion. Uh, first is about the uh, introduction. We can see that the cross domain recommendation. Uh, cross domain recommendation is a popular problem studied recently. So, most recent existing CDR models focus on leveraging different kinds of data across multiple domains to improve the recommendation performance of a target domain through the bridges. Yeah. Here, the data are usually used as private data, for example, like the user item rating, review, or user profile. The bridge refers to the linked objects between different domains, such as common user, common item, or common feature. Uh, then we talk about the motivation for our work. There are some privacy issues in the CDR, the cross domain recommendation. So the key for the CDR model is to design a transfer strategies across the bridges. In reality, this data for CDR models usually involves user sensitivity information and cannot be shared due to the regulation reasons. However, most existing CDR models assume information can directly transfer across the bridge, ignoring the privacy issues. They assume all data are plain text to both domains, which is inconsistent inconsist with reality. Therefore, how to build CDR models on the basis of protecting data privacy becomes an urgent research problem. In this paper, we can see there are two domain cost recommendation problem for simplification. Specifically, we assume there are two domains, a source domain and a target domain, which have the same user, but a different user item interaction pairs. We also assume the user item interaction only have written data and leave other side information as future work. The problem of privacy preserving CDR is to improve the recommendation performance of the target domain by leveraging the data of the source domain while protecting the data privacy of both domains. And then we take a look of our framework. This is our framework. To address the privacy preserving motivation, we propose a novel two-stage based privacy preserving CDR framework. Uh, it consists two stages. The first one is the rating publishing, and the second one is cross-domain recommendation modeling, as we show in the figure. Uh, for the rating publishing uh, stage, we have three goals. Uh, the first is privacy preserving, the second one is restricted isometric property, and the last one is sparse awareness. To achieve the three goals, we propose two differential private rating matrix publishing algorithm, including using the johnson lindau strauss transform and the sparse johnson lindau strauss transform. The formal one achieves privacy preserving and the restricted isometric property, while the later one further achieves the sparse awareness. In the second stage, in order to handle the heterogeneity between the published rating matrix of the source domain and the original rating matrix of the touchy domain, we propose a new uh, cross domain recommendation model. This CDR model has three parts. A rating reconstruction module for the published source domain, a rating regression module for the target domain, and the user embedding alignment module between the user embeddings of the source domain and target domain. So this is our two-stage framework. Uh, let's take a look of the stage one, which is the DP rating matrix publishing. There should be some requirements for the rating publishing. Uh, first of all is the privacy. For the published user item ratings, the target domain should not identify whether a user has rated an item. The second is restricted isometric property. The published rating matrix should approximate the original one where as the restricted isometric property stated. The third one is sparse awareness. 
because data sparsity is a long-standing problem in recommending system. Thus, rating publishing should be able to handle the sparse user item rating data. We have mainly three steps in the uh, first stage. The first step is to perturb the singular values of the normalized rating matrix. The second step is to generate a random matrix via johnson lindau strauss transform or sparse johnson lindau strauss transform. The third step is to transfer, transform the perturbed rating matrix by JLT or SJLT. Okay, this is our stage one DP rating matrix publishing. And for stage two, we propose a heterogeneous CDR, which consists of three steps. The first step is rating reconstruction of the source domain. The second step is rating regression of the target domain. And the last step is user embedding alignment between the source and target domains. We look into details for the heterogeneous CDR. Uh, for the first step, the rating reconstruction of the source domain. We use an autoencoder to learn user embedding. Specifically, we can first obtain the user embedding by the encoder, and then the decoder can reconstruct the perturbed ratings of each user. For the target domain, we take deep matrix factori factorization as an example. The key idea of deep matrix factorization is to minimize the cost entropy between the true ratings and the predict ratings. Where well, the predict ratings are, ob are obtained by multiple fully connected layers. To facilitate the knowledge transfer between the source and the target domains, we further propose a user embedding alignment module. Finally, the loss of the heterogeneous CDR is the combination of the three types of losses above. Then we give some analysis, both utility analysis and privacy anal analysis of our. Uh, DP framework. Uh, the first one is the user differential privacy. Uh, user pri uh, the user level differential privacy is the key for privacy analysis. By comparing the probability density functions of the output distribution of two neighboring rating matrices, we get the user level differential privacy as we described in theorem 5.1. And combined with the K-fold composition, we have DP rating, DP rating matrix publishing preserve rating matrix differential privacy as described in theorem 5.2. Another important part is the restricted isometric property. This is the main result in utility analysis. Uh, the restricted isometric property indicates that with the large probability, the Fubinus norm of the published rating matrix approximates the Fubinus norm of the original rating matrix where. The last of the, our analysis is the preconditioning effect of SJLT. In SJLT, the Hardman matrix H and the randomized diagonal matrix D serves, serves as a preconditioner. Uh, they reduce the L infinity norm while preserves the L2 norm as we described in lemma 5.5. And uh, by doing this, it improves utility in sparse case by smoothing out the sparse vectors. Finally, let's come to the experimental results. We conduct experiments on two real world data sets to verify the effectiveness of our privacy preserving CDR model. For the results, First of all, we can find that our proposed pre-CDRJ and pre-CDRS outperform all the single domain and the cross-domain SOTA, which means that the two-stage design of privacy-preserving CDR works well in predicting user's preference in target domain while preserving the data privacy of the source domain simultaneously. As for ablation study, by comparing the performance between pre-CDRJ and pre-CDRS, we can conclude that the sparse aware Johnson industrial transform can effectively alleviate the data sparsity in the source domain and thus significantly boost the recommendation performance of pre CDR. And both pre CDRJ and pre CDRS outperform pre CDR symmetry in all tasks, indicating that the heterogeneous CDR model 
we proposed in the stage two makes it easier to handle the heterogeneity of rating data and thus achieves a better performance. We also studied the effect of hyperparameters on model performance. The most important model in pre-CDRJ uh, as a privacy parameter epsilon and subspace dimension n, the key parameter in pre-CDRS is SP, which denotes the sparsity degree of sparse level. As for n, the bear-shaped curve indicates that the accuracy will first gradually increase with n and steadily decrease. Uh, as for SP, when SP is small, SJLT fails to grasp enough knowledge from the rating matrix in the source domain. When SP is large, SJLT gets some redundant information and also degrades the performance. To study the effect of source domain sparsity on the performance of GLT and SJLT, we change the sparsity of the source domain by sampling from the original data. From the results, we can conclude that first, the decrease of SP brings the decrease of the performance for both GLT and SJLT. Secondly, SJLT shows greater stability than GLT when the source domain becomes more sparse, which is owing to its sparse aware ability, as we have described as a preconditional effect. Okay, to conclude, we propose a novel two-stage based privacy preserving CDR framework called pre-CDR. And the, our framework have two stage. In stage one, the source domain privately publishing the rating matrix to the touch domain. Uh, via SJLT and uh, JLT. In stage two, the Tachi domain builds a CDR model based on its role and the privately published source domain data. We show the effectiveness of pre-CDR and hetero CDR with comprehensive results. In, in conclusion, in this paper, uh, we propose a novel two-stage privacy-preserving CDR framework to solve the privacy problem in the cost domain recommendation. We also prove this model can not only protect the data privacy of the source domain, but also alleviate the data sparsity of the source domain. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Thank you for the wonderful talk. So any questions from our audience? Yes, yeah, the first link is for our, uh, our uh, formal version of the paper. And the second is my email. Okay. So okay. since uh, I have one question that is since we want to pre preserve the privacy of the user or the other information while, while dealing with the cross domain uh, recommendation. Okay. So do we have actually some underlying assumption about the data to, to fulfill, the, fulfill the privacy preserving function? Yeah. Okay, cool. It's a good question. For the privacy preserving part, actually we can do it for general data. Uh, but for the uh, input data, it should be a rating matrix, which means the values for each element should be a real value. Uh, and um, um, we do, do not have any further requirements for the rating matrix, as long as it is a matrix uh, combined of several real values then we can do the output by the differential private. Do, we, we can construct the differential private publication by the random transform. Okay, but one thing we need to mention is that if the input matrix has a strong sparsity, our methods can improve the performance uh, by the preconditioning. So only one requirement is for the sparsity and for large sparsity, we can see the uh, large improvement for the performance.